Okay, our last example in today's lab is going to be um, so, so, so a sort of non-parametric test procedure rather. So what we've done up to now, uh, we've been using these functions t test from uh, underscore independent or or related or various ones from the the, sci the SciPy stats package. Now, the way those tests are constructed is well some statistician, the t-test goes back to student at uh, the Guinness Brewery, worked out how, you know, what's the you know, what does a test statistic look like when the null hypothesis is true? What does the distribution look like? And so they make various assumptions. Now, those assumptions may or may not be true, so there's often interest in procedures that work better when the assumptions may not, of the t-test, the may not specifically hold. And so what we're going to look at here is what's sometimes called a permutation test. Um, well, we're going to build up a null distribution from the data itself where we assume the null hypothesis is true. And we can use this distribution as a substitute for the t-table the that the t-test functions use to construct the p-value. The data we're going to use is the con data uh, that we saw in, um, in our chapter on unsupervised learning. Uh, that was last chapter. And so remember, there are, I think, uh, 2,000 genes and um, several Eight, 83 patients. 83 yeah. patients. And they're in four classes. Um, and these are all childhood cancers um, in four different categories. Yes. OK. So um, let's just uh, fit the f run the t-test on, on one, of the, uh, one of the genes. So we'll take gene 11 here. And we'll compare class 2 to class 4. So this decision about which class to compare is something that a researcher might will have made beforehand. And we want to compare um, the, the microarray or the, the genetic data at gene 11 for the, the y equals 2 group and the y equals 4 group. And it constructs a p-value. Here we've even used this so-called pooled variance by making this argument equal variance equals true. So now when we interpret this p-value and we look to see whether it's less than, say, 5% or not, we're making some assumptions about the way that the data looks. Um, and uh, when those assumptions hold, then there's only a 5% chance this p-value will be less than 5% if the null were true. So rather than trusting that uh, distribution, we're going to make this resampled one. So the, what, what the basis of this resampling procedure is we assume the null hypothesis is true. That is. The y equals 2 group at, for gene 11 is basically the same in distribution as the y equals 4 group in gene 11. So then we randomly reassign uh, the data in group 2 to the data in group 4, keeping the, the sample size in group 2 and group 4 the same. And then we recompute our t-statistic. And by doing this many, many different times, we get some idea of Assuming there's no difference between group 2 and group 4, what, were the, what are reasonable values for this t-statistic to look like? So we're going to do this 10,000 times here. What we're going to do is um, we're going to keep the, uh, the you know, th this earlier we had the first number of observations were in group 2 and the first other, the re remaining were in group 4. But we're going to reshuffle the response before running the t-test function. So that we use this shuffle function. And we're going to store the test statistic. Now we'll have 10,000 test statistics. And we can see, how does that compare to our observed test statistic? The p-value here is about, again, about 0.04. And that's very close to what we saw before. It almost, you know, um, if, I were, if we were to round it to two decimal places, they would, they would agree. Or, th sorry, two significant digits, they would agree. OK. so. Let's just take a look at um, the collection of those t-statistics. So when, what we're plotting here is a histogram of those 10,000 statistics we computed by shuffling the data or sh uh, under random the null. under the yeah. null, yes. Uh, and the red curve is the actual t-distribution. Yeah, this is the, the curve that's used to compute that 0.041 p-value. So actually, for this gene, they, they look quite similar. Yeah. Um, so uh, for assuming the null distribution looks quite similar. OK. And of course, this is for a single gene. But if we could repeat this, construct this histogram for every gene and make a non-parametric test 
for every gene. So if we have multiple genes, then we'll have multiple p-values. We could apply Bonferroni to these p-values, or we could apply Holmes procedure, or we could apply our um, bunjamin hochberg procedures. This is really just a different way to get a p-value um, that we can later use for the multiple comparisons. So the remainder, remainder of the lab um, shows how to use these p-values to do false discovery rate analysis or the benjamin hochberg procedure on these p-values. But what's really happening is um, we're just using the, this procedure to construct uh, new p-values and then running benjamin hochberg on those. So you can see um, the final outcome is the, uh, uh, you know, for a given threshold of FDR, we again get a list of uh, significantly selected genes. The, the big difference between the fund example and this one is just the p-values were computed with the non-parametric test here rather than, the, than the, that t-test function. And we'll, we'll leave the remainder of the lab for you to finish offline.